Welcome to a conversation with a community leader sponsored by Leadership Kitsap. And I'm your host, Kerry Bozeman, and I'm the former mayor of Bremerton and the former mayor of Bellevue. And my guest today is a longtime regional leader in our community, Alice Teresi. Welcome, Alice. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You. Yeah. And we're going to talk about a number of things today, but we're going to talk about mostly about the Kitsap Foundation and your position as the president of the board of the Kids Have Foundation. But a couple of questions. Teresa is an interesting name. Where did that come from? <laughs> well, first of all, that, of course, is my husband's I, name because I I'm, uh, I'm an old lady, and in the olden days, we took our husband's names. <laughs> um, but it is, a, uh, I think, a, an English uh, rendition of either a Basque or a Spanish name. Okay. And the Teresa was the uh, person that cleaned the bullpen, El Toro. Torisi. Oh, oh. So that's what my well, father-in-law used to say. It's not a name you see very often. No. So and it's we, English. It's English. It's English. And we know every Teresi that there is. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not made up name. There are not many of them. Yeah. And right. it's always hard to spell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So before we talk about the foundation, um, I know a little bit about your background, but uh, where are you from? Did, what brought you to Kitsap County? Well, um, I grew up in New York State and met my husband at uh, college, where Cornell. Were you, where were you born? Uh, uh, near Newburgh, New York, near Poughkeepsie, New York. Uh -huh. Great. You still got a little New York yeah, flavor a little to bit. your voice. Yeah, a little bit. Great place to grow up. And um, anyway, so I uh, met my husband in, at Cornell, and he came out here to work for Boeing. Oh. And uh, so I came out. She, we got married, and I came out, and I got my first teaching job. Uh, at, on Bainbridge teacher? Island. I was a home ec teacher in Bainbridge High School for uh -huh. 15 years. And wow. uh, really fun. I got to know a lot of kids and a lot of parents. And I think that's what led to my political career. Uh, uh, where, where, Cornell. Where's Cornell? Cornell is in Ithaca, New York. Oh, it is, huh? It is a, an Ivy League school, but um, they always used to say there's the Ivy League and Cornell. Yeah, so. that's right. <laughs> they have a football team, though. I and think. Mm, yeah, <laughs> they call it that. <laughs> yeah, so you uh, you came out here, and like everyone else, so all of us that come out here, we fall in love with it, and we stay the rest of our lives. Absolutely, right? our first uh, drive around Bainbridge Island, we thought we were in a national park. So did you, f when you first came here, did you settle in Bainbridge Island? Uh, well, the first six months, eight months, we lived in the University of Washington District because I needed to finish my degree, uh, and then we came to Bainbridge. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you were on Bainbridge, and you were teaching school in the Bainbridge School District, Correct. I assume. Yeah. And what got you interested in politics? On, you ran for mayor, and you were mm -hmm. elected mayor. Mm -hmm. Before it was the city of Bainbridge, it was called Winslow, Correct. Right? Yes. Winslow. Right. And it included the whole island. No, it did not. Oh, it did it not. It included the one mile radius approximately around the ferry dock. Oh. The rest of the island was unincorporated and belonged to Kitsap County. Right. Um, and the main um, objection was that they wanted their own people to be making land use decisions and uh, safety and security decisions. Rather than the county. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And so the island was incorporated in 1994, but that was after I finished being the mayor. Yeah. So it was a strong mayor system, right? It was. You actually were in charge of the yes. whole system, right? Yeah. The, th the three branches of government were in existence at that time. Uh, the council was the, the uh, 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 legislative branch and right. I was the administration. Right. So Bainbridge since then has gone to a council manager form of government. Correct. Well, uh, and I've worked in both. In Bellevue, we were a council manager, and in Bremerton, strong mayor. What, what, what's your preference, and what do you think is most effective? Um, well, yeah, I think it depends on the quality of the city manager uh, mm -hmm. a lot. We have had some very good city managers on Bainbridge, and so things are going well. The one negative, I am a, a kind of a constitutional constructionist person, mm -hmm. and I like the idea of having the checks and balances. So um, when you have a strong mayor, you have an executive branch that has checks and balances over the legislative branch. When you have a city manager form, the legislative and executive are combined. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, uh, a council majority can run with the uh, legislation. I've always thought uh, 
uh, both systems work. Uh, most of the other, the other cities in this county are strong mayor systems, yeah. right? Um, I think it, strong mayors can create change, uh, more so than just council systems. Yeah. So if you've got a, a, a good mayor that's got the capability of leading, and you can create good change. Uh, the, the idea of having mayors that don't, aren't very good at management and the city kind of gets mismanaged. That's where the strong, the st uh, having a good city manager makes sense. So they both work. They uh, do. The city manager is probably a safer system in terms of uh, probably pretty much assuring you're going to get a quality management day-to-day -day operation. Mm -hmm. So well, and the city of Bainbridge Island is doing well. Um, it uh, is expensive to live on the island because there have been a lot of decisions made that are co cost property owners. However, interestingly, in sort of to segue, you're, you're the lead person, but I'll tell you that the mayor of Bainbridge Island currently is also the executive director of the Kitsap Community Foundation. Um, and he is doing a good job as his mayor. Name? His name is Cole Medina. Yeah. And he is doing a good job in both jobs. And I don't know how he even sleeps because he's a busy guy. Well, you know, I'm very familiar with that. Uh, I was the mayor of Bellevue and also the, the executive director of the King County Boys and Girls Club for about eight years mm -hmm. and it it's a lot of work mm -hmm. and your family suffers a little bit and I know Cole well I'm, I consider myself a friend of Cole's and I think he's doing a great job mm -hmm. we're lucky to have him yeah and, uh, oh absolutely the uh, the community foundation has been in existence for about 25 years but kind of uh, just perked along. Um. Okay, now wait a minute, you're getting out in front okay. of me. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask that question. Okay, well, I'm excited about this. I know, this, well, so. <laughs> I, I know you are. So, you j why did you join the Kids Have Foundation Board, and what have you most enjoyed about that membership on that board? Well, let's see. I guess I consider myself a board animal. Uh, I've since being the mayor uh, after being the mayor I served on the State Transportation Commission which is the board of directors for uh, the DOT That's an important washed out it was I mean yeah the budget is Who huge. Who was the governor then? Uh, four governors starting with Lowry um, and then um, uh, all the way Locke. up through Locke and then all the way up. Yeah, yeah. So um, anyway uh, it is uh, it got to be something that I uh, enjoyed doing and I found I felt like I was good at it. I felt like I had a kind of insight into leadership as mm -hmm. well as the ability to um, build coalitions and partnerships on the board. And so after that, then I was asked to be on the uh, um, Olympic College board. Yeah. And then and an, an, I'm on the Bloedel board and I'm on this board. So, I mean, when I was asked to join, it seemed natural to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I also felt like um, I wanted to, you know, give back to the community. And, and Kitsap Community Foundation is an organization that does that. Yeah. So were you on all these boards while you were still teaching? No, no. Okay, after so you I, had retired from teaching. I had, after I had my second child while in office of the mayor and teaching, I decided I needed to let something go, and I yeah. let the teaching job go. Yeah. I, I love board work, too. I've always loved it. I love uh, being an executive director of a nonprofit and working with boards because yeah. they're mostly committed people who want to do the right thing, mm -hmm. and they're looking for leadership yeah. uh, in many cases, and so, yeah. Um, yep. What's the mission? A lot of people don't know much about the Kitsap Foundation. So today w our goal is to try to allow okay. them to understand more mm -hmm. about what they do. Mm -hmm. What's the mission of the Kitsap Foundation? It's to connect um, people who want to be philanthropic with causes that need the money. So people who want to make contributions mm -hmm. of their own assets to uh, worthy causes. Right? Correct. And what's the history of the Kitsap Foundation. I remember, no, oh, it wasn't that long ago, maybe 10, 15 years ago when it just kind of started and it was kind of struggling and that sort of thing. It's now doing well, I know, but what's the history of the foundation? How well, did it get started? It was actually started about 25 years ago and 1994-ish, uh, something like that. Um, and I don't know who started it. I know a few, uh, K Tom Kilbane and a few other people who were on the original board. But um, there is a community foundation in many counties, and right. like Seattle in Seattle, has a huge 
right. Foundation. And King County. Um, and uh, there's one on Bainbridge. And I think maybe the Bainbridge one predates the Kitsap County one. Mm. Uh, but uh, it was started by some people that there's felt... There's also a foundation on Bainbridge? There is. Oh, I'd be done. Bainbridge Foundation. I didn't know Bainbridge that. Foundation. Okay. A and then, uh, you know, it was started by people who understood that there were people in Kitsap County who had resources and there were lots of nonprofits doing good work and uh, they felt like it was time to, to get that started. Um, it kind of perked along on a low keel, f you know, uh, I, what, what, what's the number here? $15,000 were the first grants made in 1999. Um, last year, we were able to uh, contribute about two million dollars. Wow. So there's a been a, a tremendous growth and I, I guess I would attribute a lot of it to our, our current executive director as well as our current board. Right. I don't think there's any doubt about that. I think mm -hmm. uh, the current board and the current executive director, Cole, uh, you've, you've really seen an uh, upsurge and an improvement in the organization in many, many sure. ways. Sure. And well, it, it also though has to do with the economy you know the right. in in 2006 to 2010 things really went south uh, here as well as everywhere in the country and you know people didn't necessarily have the resources that they do today uh, but since then I mean real estate has gone crazy uh, car dealerships all of the right. uh, people that are doing stuff in the county have done well and right. so consequently you know they have money to contribute so how does the foundation work? Who gives to it? How do you get donors? Um, what do you do with the money? Well, um, we, you know, we could have more uh, donors, of course, but uh, how, how it happens is that we are in touch with the financial advisors in the county as well as the lawyers who do estate planning and people who um, want to avoid uh, death taxes or inheritance taxes as well as people that just want to do good, mm -hmm. um, get in touch with uh, our executive director and, um, and for funds are created. We have some very interesting um, assets. The most interesting one and one that I think is kind of cool to talk about, we um, uh, uh, happened to uh, make contact with somebody who had stud service for uh, a very um, prestigious line of bulls. Wow. And so we have a share in a, huh. an individual bull and the uh, stud results that that bull provides to um, uh, his uh, owner. That would be unique. And it is unique. We also have um, people who have uh, donated condominiums to us, which we can then sell. Uh, people uh, who give pe bequeath um, part of their estate to us and um, just people who give dollars. Right. So a big part of your strategy is estate planning. Correct. How do you describe, what is estate planning? Well, my husband and I just went through this. Um, people you know, do it through their wills they and do. that sort of they thing? They do. When, yeah, we uh, just updated our will and uh, you know, we took a look at what would our liability be in the case of death to our, we want to be able to pass most of our money along to our children. In our case, it didn't turn out that we had to worry about the taxes because we didn't have enough assets, but it got us to thinking about what would we want our legacy of life mm -hmm. to be? Okay, do we want it, we, we, we loved our dog, okay? Would we want to maybe give some money to paws? Um, we are concerned about um, some of the, uh, you know, homelessness and some of the other current issues. Would we want to give some of our re uh, assets to uh, help people like that? Mm -hmm. And they're, you know, so that's how it starts with people. They right. start thinking about the fact that they are mortal, the fact that that life is not going to go on forever. Yeah, no one's beat that one. <laughs> and, uh, and so then, um, you know, we talk to our uh, lawyer who is uh, in the business of writing, a specific lawyer, kind of lawyer that is in the mm -hmm. business of writing wills and, you know, then they can direct us. Um, and we didn't, we have not yet established a, a trust, mm -hmm. uh, but if we did, it, we, I would hope that I could talk my husband into uh, establishing it with the Kitsap Community Foundation. Mm -hmm. Cole Medina is a lawyer. 
he knows how to set those things up. Mm -hmm. And we have a number of trusts um, uh, that we um, have been able to set up for people. Some mm -hmm. of the car dealerships and some of the other wealthy people in the, uh, um, mm -hmm. in the area. And uh, our assets grew from 2.9 million to 12.5 wow. million. That's amazing. So that's what we have currently. And um, we most, have a goal. Are most of those assets held in an endowment where the principal is not spent, but the interest earned goes to the charity? Is that the way right. most of those assets are? Well, it's a combination, it's Carrie. A combination. We, I, I can't tell you what the actual uh, division is, right. but um, we have an endowment, and I think our goal is $20 million. We're not there yet. Right. But a lot of times people will just give you money to give to Right. Uh, like one of the things I know the foundation's done because my wife and I've actually looked into it. You know, we all get uh, requests from lots of organizations sure. for money. And we write a check and I'll, I'll say to my wife, have we written a check yet to <laughs> so and so? And in talking to the foundation, we could just give whatever that amount is we give out every year to, to the foundation and kind of create our own internal little foundation, the Bozeman Foundation. Sure. And then the foundation would distribute that money as we saw fit. Exactly. That's a nice service. Exactly. And there is a slight, a small fee for that. No, no, I would it's assume. In the, it's in the 2 3% range. But if you um, gave your money to Fidelity, Mutual mm -hmm. or some, I shouldn't probably mention a brand name, but if you gave it to some, uh, you know, a fund, uh, they would charge you uh, a, a fee as well right. to manage your money. Right. So this can be done through community foundation and then you get, a, others get a benefit from mm -hmm. it. And so that would be kind of a short term annual thing. On the other hand, if we wanted to create our own foundation that would be there forever within the Kids at Foundation and say we had 10 million to give them, or we don't, but we'll say that. <laughs> and then those assets would stay in perpetuity yeah. forever. Right. And we would direct where the where the earnings off those assets would go, right? Correct. You could do it that way, or you could direct that a certain portion of the principal would also be uh, spent, and you then could. the asset would go down to, you know, slowly go down to a uh, reduced amount. Right. So either way, you know, the the donor has the is in the driver's seat, and the donor can establish exactly how they want the foundation to proceed with the donation. Right. Yeah, it's a great service for a community, and yeah. I think it's it's great that we have this foundation in our community, and that they're. You know, it's well led and you've got a great board and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. So the foundation also makes grants to nonprofits, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how do you go about doing that? How do you decide who gets money and how does that process work? Well, there are a couple of things. You, a lot of people apply. They right? do. Yeah. There are a lot of things. First of all, people do apply for grants and we have a grant committee that and so a criteria. So do you have a certain amount of money you set aside every year for grants? Y yes, mm -hmm. okay. we do. But then also, uh, we have a function, a, uh, an event, which we call the Great Give. We're going to get to the okay, Great Give, well, but we'll talk about it now. Okay, but well, in, in the Great Give, um, you, can, uh, des you can say, I want to donate so well, Let's so explain what the Great Give is. Well, the Great Give is a day of donating. One day of donating. A day of donating, um, and it is... It's mostly uh, online, right? Online, and it's in the spring. And you can get online and donate money to the nonprofit that you choose. So that's another way that nonprofits get money and through Kids It's Up. amazingly successful. Yeah. I think you're raising over a million dollars. Yep, that was our goal, and we have hit, hit it the last two years. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah. All in one day. In one day, and then that money is distributed to the. And, but it's mostly all designated, right? It is. I mean, I call into Great Give, and I say I want my money to go to the Humane Society or the YMCA or right. something like that. Right. Or to the Kitsap Community Foundation. I mean, we have a certain amount of expenses ourselves yeah. through for our staff. We have a staff of three. It is not a. Uh, you know, a no, you bureaucracy a small heavy, staff, right. uh, but we do have to advertise the Great Give, for example, and we have to, you know, have our executive director there mm -hmm. to help people if they want to make a foundation. Well, basically, it's a one-day yeah. raise a million dollars right. and distribute it throughout yep. this community. Yep, 
Yep. It's, that, it's a great program. And it's pretty much automated, so, you know, it can be done, and that happens in the spring. So back to the nonprofit who wants to get funding from the foundation, they apply. Yes. And then you some way, what's your decision process there? I think if they apply, they get to be included in the Great Give. I know, but outside the Great Give, you have a grant program. Oh, right. Right. Okay, well, you know, I, I'm not sure that I could actually enumerate the process, okay. but uh, there is a committee that has been functioning to do that work. Right. And we, the board, have delegated to them right. the responsibility. Right. Uh, I know Leadership Kitsap that's sponsoring this mm -hmm. program uh, has applied to Mm -hmm. to the foundation and have received funding, I know. Uh, yeah, there are something like 60 or 60, 70 different nonprofits. So you, so you run the, how did the Great Give get started? And what was it, where did that come from? Uh, originally, I don't know, but there are, this is a function of community foundations throughout oh, the country. Um, and I believe it may all happen I around here. Like I think maybe the Seattle uh, Foundation has, and King County Foundation has their great give on the same day or around the same area and or area of time. Well, it's the biggest fundraiser in yeah. this county by yeah. far for yeah. one day. Uh, it's an amazing. Yeah. To, I've been in, I worked for nonprofits most of my life and uh, I wish they'd have come up with that idea when I was around. I mean, it's a great idea. Um, so the Kids Have Foundation uh, takes money through wills. They have the great give. Um, they're giving money to nonprofits. Do they run any of their own programs? Yeah, we I, have. I, oh, I've got one. To add. Uh, what's it called? Um, I'll think about it here in a minute. Kids Up Strong. Kids Up Strong. Well, we have two or three other programs okay. as well. What else? But kids, well, we have Kids Up Strong. We have Leave 10 for Kids Up. Oh yeah, let's talk about that. Okay, Leave 10 for Kids Up is, is an extension of the giving. Um, it is uh, recommending that people leave 10% of their right. assets to Kids Up Community Foundation, that that would then create an endowment or could be distributed right away to uh, various nonprofits around the county. And the idea of that is that we all have worked here, raised our family here. Do we want to leave a small portion of our assets when we're gone right. to continue the good quality of yep. life in this community, yep. right? I think so. And, um, you know, 10%. It's kind of like leaving money to your hometown. It is. It is. And, you know, we all, uh, m most people that I know just are effusive about how wonderful it is to live here. And part of the reason is that we have a lot of uh, uh, nonprofit working uh, um, organizations for animals, for uh, people with disabilities, for uh, older people, mm -hmm. uh, I, for housing, for homeless, for all kinds of things. And, and part of all of that makes it worth living here. If we didn't have these nonprofits, and I'm going to be political here, the government would have to do it. And I'm not really... And they can do it. And, and I don't want government to do that. They're, well, they're they don't have the... A, they don't have the expertise, and right. B, they, they don't understand about recruiting volunteers. Most of all this is volunteer-driven, right. all these good right. works that are going on there, out it there. It totally is, and you don't have the to have laws. doesn't know how to do that. And you don't have to have laws and regulations and WACs and RCWs to, to deal with it. You, you only have to have people who are happy to do what they're doing and of course you know they they're governed by rules of legality right, you have and to be a non like that, legal nonprofit. yeah and you, have, and you to have to be honest and you manage, have to have books you have to manage your finances yeah, yeah and you all gotta all have that. all that you, you but have. but that's um but that's one, one of the uh, reasons that you know that people stay here because it is so wonderful to live here Plus, there's not a lot of traffic. <laughs> well, maybe Bainbridge, you've getting, got traffic. Yeah, getting pretty you've let's got not, traffic. We don't need to get into that. That is you a whole other subject. <laughs> well, I know I, I spent about 10 years working in downtown Seattle, and um, we started seeing back in the mid-'80s, which is, what, 30 years ago? And we started seeing more homeless issues. And the city just didn't do anything about it. They kept putting it off and putting it off and putting it off, and now they have a crisis on their hands. So now... Yeah. They're trying to get everybody together around the table and solve the problem. Mm -hmm. But it's it, the key is getting out in front of it before mm -hmm. it happens. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. And we've got a housing issue here in this county right now. Mm -hmm. And I talked to the United Way person today. He said, we don't have a homeless problem. We have a housing problem, affordable housing problem. And I don't know if that's exactly correct, but 
It's an interesting thought. So on a regional, I know Bainbridge, you have a really, it's expensive to buy a home on Bainbridge Island, that's for sure. And it's getting more expensive the rest of this county. So yeah. we're going to have to deal with this housing, affordable right. housing issue. Affordable housing that goes along with services for people who have mental right. health issues and people who have addiction issues is, right. I think, the solution. Uh, you can't just build units and expect people who have those problems to go live there and everything is no, great. No, I agree. There's a lot of mental health issues yeah. going on. But I want to go back okay. to the foundation. Okay. Yeah. What's Kitsap Strong? Well, Kitsap Strong, actually, good segue, Carrie. You're very skilled at this. Yeah. Kitsap Strong is a collective uh, project involving organizations that help people who have adverse childhood experiences. We call that ACEs. So they got off to a bad start. And, right. And then, it, right. And it, and it got worse. It got worse, and they are the people that have addiction problems and that have homelessness and that have mental health issues. And so Kitsap Strong is a is a, a effort, a group of nonprofits that are trying to address this. Okay, we're getting down to the close. Unbelievable. Is there, <laughs> is there anything I have not asked you about the foundation you want to share with the viewers? Uh, well, you asked me about the other uh, aspects of the foundation, but uh, the the one last thing that we didn't talk about was the Woman's Giving Circle. Oh yeah. And um, Patty Lent, the former right. Mayor Bremerton, uh, a has. Good friend? Uh, she's a good friend of me and you, and. She she um, is the leader of that, and uh, basically you can join with your friends. All you have to do is get a bunch of people together who are willing to donate $1,000. They're creating an endowment in the name of, ki of uh, Women's Giving Circle that will then distribute money. Great idea. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alice. Okay. I've enjoyed our conversation, and this is another conversation with a community leader, and we'll see you next time on A Conversation with a Community Leader. Thank you. Leadership Kitsap is our community's civic leadership program. Leadership Kitsap fosters and empowers educated, prepared, and engaged community leaders. For over 25 years, we have cultivated leaders that work collaboratively to create positive change, dedicated to making our community a better place to work and live. We expose our class to Kitsap's leaders across public, private, and nonprofit sectors. We are happy to bring many of the conversations with these leaders to you. Strong leaders build strong communities. Mm -hmm.